What's up, everybody? This is the Colonnade Sports Podcast. I am your co-host, Isaiah Smith, and I have my co-sports editor and co-host, Chris Lambert, to my left once again this week, ready to bring you guys a lot of great stuff again this week. What's going on, everybody? Uh, it's Tuesday today. We're recording. I uh, have a little bit different schedule this week. Isaiah is going to head out tomorrow to a conference uh, with one of our other sports writers in New York, so we're going to record a little early. Our show will drop on Thursday, as usually does, but we're going to be talking about stories that will print tomorrow in the Colonnade, so keep a lookout for that, and we're going to let Isaiah take us off on first down. Yeah, first down, we're talking Georgia College recruiting. One of our bigger stories of the week, I actually got a chance to write that one, so I'm really excited to see that one in print um, and see that how that one um, plays out and see the feedback I get from it. But, I mean, recruiting, in short, is the biggest part of what coaches do. Coach Eller, I talked to um, – he said that's why he has a job. And Georgia College actually finds a way to do it very, very well. And, I mean, my story goes into not only how Georgia College does it, but why they do it so well. I got to, got to talk to a lot of our most successful programs and a lot of our programs in general. I'm going to talk to baseball, women's basketball, softball, um, et cetera. And so there are several factors for why Georgia College does does that well and they win in the recruiting game. But one of the first, um, you know, things I, or one of the first people I talked to was Coach Jeremy Mayweather, women's basketball assistant coach, um, and he kind of uh, talked to me about an aspect of Georgia College that a lot of people hit on, but don't necessarily always think about anything of what makes Georgia College so attractive. So um, here's Coach Mayweather um, first with that. I went to a lot of a lot of schools, and when I came here, I didn't even tour the campus. I didn't tour the campus when I came. I came here. I, I, I came here, and I think something was going on in the gym. We played basketball at GMC, and I met I met the head basketball coach at the time, who was Coach Sellers, and we sat and we talked on the steps at GMC. Man, I said just the fact that you just took time to pull me aside and we sitting here, sitting on the steps talking about life. That genuineness, that GC genuineness. You know, I need I need to trademark that. GC genius, man. That's that's what sells. And that's something you know it doesn't really surprise you to hear something like that. You'd be surprised how many times you know we sit down with these coaches and they talk. They they never really talk about you know the like there never seems to be a, a hard and fast plan for every recruiting visit. You know, it's it's usually at the coach's discretion and they they we really want to sell that the culture that we have here at Georgia College and you know you you go on the GC Bobcats website and um, look at the athlete profiles. So many times you'll see it was the vibe or the culture or the just the feeling on campus that you know was that sold the athlete, not so much the program or the, or maybe the scholarship money. It's, you know, it comes down to something you know a lot deeper and a lot more ingrained here in the athletic department than uh, I think you'll see at other schools. So you know in the conference. Yeah, definitely. Um, in my story, I talked about um Erin Drynan's recruiting visit, one of our standout women's basketball players. Um, and she came on an absolutely just terrible day, from what I understand, and she was still swayed. Um, had Division One offers, I think, and she was still swayed to come to Georgia College, um, and continue her career here, uh, in green and blue as a Bobcat. But I mean. Not only does Georgia College recruit well, they also get a lot of they a lot of the people they want they get. They recruited a high clip, and the baseball coach, Coach Jason Eller, in his second year, talked to me a little bit about that as well. Pretty much, we work at about a ninety percent clip. I mean, for every ten prospects that we bring in and offer them an opportunity, we get about nine out of ten. So that says a lot about Georgia College and and our campus and our and our community and our you know our our professors and our students. It's just uh, wonderful. I, I think it's the best college experience in the, in the state, so it's real easy to sell. Those efficiency numbers are really astounding. You know, can you think of another program that you think re recruits at a, high, a level that high? Obviously, you know, a smaller program here at Georgia College, not recruiting the, the, the type of athletes with a high profile, like, a, you know, maybe a Georgia or a South Carolina, but that's astounding, 90% efficiency that he's talking about. Um, really does speak to the culture that Coach Eller in particular and really the rest of the athletic, de athletic department has been able to create uh, to get athletes to buy in at such a high rate. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, another thing, another tidbit that my story does talk about as well, um, the way they recruit the state of Georgia. A lot of their recruits come from the state of Georgia. I think our associate athletic director, Jimmy Wilson, talked a little bit about how, you know, the Hope Scholarship gives a little bit of help um, in, when we recruit the state like that. But just keeping the talent at home and the, and the, the athletes who have the grades to get in and the athleticism as well to pl to perform on the field that helps out a lot and you know our coach Ryan Aquino talked about a little bit going cross country and as a grad assistant his first couple years but now really able to stay at home because of there's because there's just so much talent and I think being efficient and recruiting at that level in your home state is very very good for a program like this and you have the Hope Scholarship to help you out as well. Absolutely yeah another the good the uh, infographic in that story really speaks a lot to 
you know, we may not have the funds um, that, you know, some of these bigger schools do, but we, we stretch, stretch the dollars about as much as we can and find a way to make it work. And the, it really comes down to, the, you know, how, bad the co- how badly the coaches want to be here. You know, the coaches will they'll drive all over the country. Uh, Ryan Aquino especially, um, he'll, you know, he speaks to driving to, I think, as far out as Arizona to scout certain players. And a lot of that is on his own dime and uh, gas and transportation and food and lodging. That's, you know, that's all on him. And so that really speaks to, you know, a passion that he has for recruiting and Im- improving the, uh, the women's basketball program. Yeah, definitely. And so um, with that passion for improving – you're going to see results, and so that leads us kind of to our next our next topic for second down here. Um, on second down, we're going to talk about uh, what it takes kind of to build a championship contender. Um, we talked to Coach Jason Eller once again, the baseball coach, and talked to him about just kind of what it takes to, to build a champion, what it takes to, to get guys to buy in and do everything that you need to do to win a Peach Belt Conference championship, which he did in his first season last year. So, you know, what did you take away from that story, Chris? Uh, yeah, it really was astounding how, how often uh... – not how often, but how how impressive it was to to hear from the players uh, that have been with him for a while, and you know this is only his second year, and not even we're only a few games into his second season here at Georgia College, and he he went he came from Augusta Augusta University program that I'm pretty familiar with. Uh, being from Augusta, they were pretty bad for a while, and uh, he you know he gave them their first winning season since uh, in his last year at, at AU. He went 29 and 22, giving them their first winning season since I believe 2010. So, you know this is something that he he does. Um, very well, you know he's a he he knows how to compete at a high level and knows how to recruit players like we saw in your story. And there are some uh, you you look at how we're playing now. We're eight and one in the conference. We just dropped our first game to uh, USC Aiken. We lost the last game of that series, but still won the overall series. And we lost five to four um, in that series. So we're we're competing at a high level once again. And it's just incredible to hear players talk about the kind of leader he is. And it, it, so many things translate. You, you know, you you look at coaches that are. Uh, maybe technically very technically proficient or very good at you know coaching mechanics in terms of um, maybe a pitch or at the plate, but he he seems to you know approach this game so holistically and uh, develop players that you know uh, such a, such well rounded players um, you know off the off the field and uh, in the dugout and in the classroom as well. He you know he really puts a puts emphasis on all three of those facets and it, it you know it translates to every every single part of the game. Yeah, definitely, I agree. And, you know, one of the things that I took away is his attitude. Um, one of the things that the writer talked about, it was Alex Jones wrote that story, yeah. giving credit to him. But um, th- his attitude that uh, Coach Eller brings, uh, you know, he's always positive. Um, our athletic director here at Georgia College, Wendell Staten, said he embodies a can-do attitude. And, I mean, I think that positive attitude, it helps to breed the, the mentality of expecting to win, expecting to be, have yourself in a good season at, or a good position at the end of the season um, and have good seasons. And I think that's one of the toughest things to do. For a lot of teams, you see that mental hurdle of expect going out expecting to win every time out and expecting to be in, in a position to be compete for a championship is the hardest thing. It's the last hurdle. And so, but that can-do attitude that he possesses really does help aid in getting over that hurdle and you know, I think he has his team really believing this season. They're eight and one, and I think they really do believe they're among the class of the Peach Belt Conference. Yeah, and that, you know, just, just, we talked about a couple times already about developing the culture, but you you want to get to a point as a program where you don't when you lose players, like you know, you look at last year, we lost a guy like Brandon Benson who led the, uh, you know, as a team, you know, we led the led the nation in D two in uh, home runs and extra base hits, and it looked like a guy like Brandon Benson who led the Peach Belt Conference in home runs and RBIs and extra base hits. We lose a guy like that to the draft, you know, drafted 20th round by the Diamondbacks, I believe. Um, that's a pre, you know, as a D2 school, that's a pretty sizable, sizable draft, but also leads us with a as a program with a, a big hole to fill. And you know, already you want to get to a point where you're not rebuilding, you're reloading. And you know, we're at, we're at a place right now. It looks like we're doing that. We're putting up a lot of runs. We're pitching really well. Got guys like Cal Gentry stepping up, senior Brandon Purcell stepping up as well. Um, you know, behind the plate. So you, Coach Coach Eller already a second year creating that mentality where you expect to win. You know, it's not a surprise, you know, at Georgia College to see see the baseball team play, playing so well and hopefully get a little bit more notoriety and get some fans out to the game. Yeah, definitely. It's always a welcome addition to see. And also you got, you know, the, the new upgrades to the field, um, changing the fence, adding bleachers into the outfield, let them uh, give the opposing outfielders um, a, a bit of a hard time out there, I guess, if they make an error or make a mistake. So, you know, the, these different things are just kind of adding to the program. And I think, you know, Coach Eller, he has what it takes not only to win in one year, win in a couple years, but I think he has what it takes to – to really lead Georgia College's baseball program in, into the future with multiple winning seasons, multiple um, NCAA tournament appearances, multiple, you know, Peach Belt Conference um, championship appearances. I've always heard it said that as a coach, you know, 
you want to play for your play for your conference champion or championship or your region championship or whatever it is every season. And I think um, he really does have this team in a position going forward to where they will be able to do that um, in in the near future with the way he recruits, like you said, with the way he develops guys when they get here, with the way he gets guys who have experience to come over, like Grant Stallings and different guys like that. So I think Coach Eller's doing a wonderful job, and he's really putting this putting Georgia College – I think even bigger on the map and Absolutely. making us kind of known for being this ba- a bit of a baseball factory or even a powerhouse, if you will. Yeah, I think that's going to be interesting looking forward. You know, like we said, only a second season. Um, but if they can, you know, get back to the Peach Belt Tournament um, and make you know, make a splash and compete and ho- hopefully bring out home another championship, then I think looking forward, Georgia College is really sort of the, the, the team to beat in the Peach Belt going forward. Yeah, definitely. I have to agree. So on third down, we're going to move forward here and try to push through here and get – um, done in a good amount of time, but um, third down, we're going to talk about uh, one of our athletes, a bit of a profile story to, story we did had last week. Um, Caleb Brockway, um, she is one of the leaders for the volleyball team, um, was a junior this year, but she already owns the Georgia College career um, assist record with, you know, nearly, by, by nearly a thousand with one more year left to play, which is absolutely insane I mean she has the top three she's in the top three um for most assists in a game um she owns the top three spots for that excuse me but she has 55 twice versus North Greenville and West Georgia and 52 against Mars Hill so I mean just talk a little bit about what she means to the volleyball team and just you know the numbers she's put up over these past three years with one more year to play because it's insane you talk about the numbers those are obviously some pretty ridiculous sizable numbers she's put up, but more of a leadership role. She's gonna have to step up. You know, the team's only losing one senior, so it's gonna be looking for a leader. And I think she's she's the uh, her and Taylor Svell are the are two seniors that are on the team, both play big roles for the Bobcats and really looking for for Kayla to step up and be an impactful player for the Bobcats. They you know, she plays she's in the she's the setter for the team, so that's you know she's got a lot of things going on and coach coach Krim, Krimdek talks about that in the stories look out for that she you know she talks about you know most people you know looking at the ball and on the floor but she's got to keep keep control of who's where at the net um, who she's who she's setting to a lot of people jump differently and uh, like to spike the ball differently and Isaiah also um, talks about this a little bit you know it's it's you know it's kind of a thankless job um, you know the highlight plays if you you know look from the outside looking in the highlight plays are the big kills you know at the net big blocks. Um, also, you know, big spikes, the oh yeah, the big plays, but no one really talks about you know, oh, great setup by Brockway. Um, that's someone, something you know, going in you might not look for, but hopefully after the story and uh, get a little bit more exposure, you, how much goes into you know, you know, going twelve and two at home and make getting a championship berth. It's it's very much a team effort, and Caleb Brockway is a big part of that. Yeah, definitely. She's, you know, she's. No, I'm not, I'm not going to say the heart and soul of the team, but, you know, she's one of those players that really makes things roll, you know, downhill. And when she's doing what she's supposed to do and really um, making the plays that she needs to make and helping the team that way, you know, it, it really is a snowball effect and really does roll downhill. Um, and, you know, she's a big part of the team, like we've been saying. And, you know, this upcoming season and this fall, um, you know, I think she's going to be one of the leaders. She's going to be one of the people that um, this team looks to for some leadership. And, you know, they're going to try and, you know, navigate their way back into the NCAA tournament, maybe win the Pe- a Peach Belt tournament uh, championship. And, you know, they got in the NCAA tournament last season for the first time in school history. A bit of a surprise, I think, to a lot of people, um, if not on the – I know not to the team, but maybe to some people here – on campus who aren't as familiar with the volleyball program or the volleyball team, but definitely encourage you guys to get out, check them out. Um, volleyball's fast. It's fun. It's easy to watch. Um, if you don't know what's going on, that's still, that's still okay because it's still easy to watch and it's fun to watch. And, um, you know, there we play a very good brand of volleyball. I think we play, you know, high quality volleyball. Coach um, Crumdick does a really good job. Has a very well coached team every year. Um, and this year was kind of the point where um, the levy kind of broke, and yep. we kind of got into the postseason and got over the hump that we've been trying to get over since the program's inception uh, a few years ago. So that's one of the big, th- a big mark for for a team when you get into the postseason like you want to. So next year everyone's going to be trying to build on that. And I think that's the goal is to not only advance into the NCAA tournament and get to the first round, um, but the goal is, you know, to go further than the first round. You know, even though they did that this year, maybe even go past the second round. So they're definitely going to be looking to build and, you know, losing Chandler Ulton, like you said, um, but they're going to have a solid core back. She's the only senior that's going to be um, departing the team. So 
when you're speaking of championship contenders at Georgia College, I don't think you can look much further than the volleyball team yep. because they're going to be a team that's going to be in contention for the Peach Belt, I'd say, next year and going to be ready to make some noise in the NCAA tournament at the end of the year, hopefully. Yeah, we play such a competitive brand of volleyball here as well. And, you know, this is some, coming from someone who doesn't know a lot about volleyball but, you know, can tell when, you know, very high-energy team is one thing you can notice just as a sports fan. You can see that right when you go to the games and – it was nice to see sort of the school rally behind that team as it came down to the end of the playoffs, into the postseason. We, we hosted the conference tournament, so going to those games and fans were getting a little rowdy. A lot of the athletes were there. Um, and, you know, you, you watch Coach, Coach Krimdek on the sideline and the, the leaders on that team, and, you know, every point they're, they're jacked up and, you know, it gets the crowd into it. A lot of, a lot of fun, fun stuff going on. Um, so look for the – Look for the Bobcats to make a splash next year. Yeah, definitely. But um, unfortunately, that's all the time we have for you guys today. Thank no fourth, you for no fourth down. This yeah, week. no fourth down this week. We're gonna punt to next week. But uh, thank you guys for listening. Um, this is the Colonnade Podcast signing off. I'm Isaiah. I'm Chris. See you guys. <laughs>